Does it bother you that you have to do that? Yes. But you still do it, don't you? But you, you are pained by what you did. Do you regret punishing your children? I regret punishing? No. But, but, you, but you just said it pains you. You misunderstood the question, that's why. You were not listening to what I said. It is not. Did I regret having a child? You were asked. Listen, listen. It is as if me asking you, are you a father? Yeah. You're not a father yet, okay. You have a father, right? Yes. Did he ever regret having you? No, no, no he so. didn't. This is what happens in that verse in Genesis 6 6. He regretted creating mankind. He was pained over what is that, happened. With wait his a case. minute, yes, wait a minute. Says, You're not listening again. Even so. before I finish the question, you want to answer. Listen to the question first. It is about the creation of human beings. In Genesis 3, we read that he was pleased with his creation. In Genesis 6 6, he regretted his creation. You tell me what it says then, God. It says we considered. No, no, you tell me what it says in your Talmud. Sorry, in the, so the in, in, in Genesis 6 6. Okay. The Hebrew says, Why you knock in Hashem, God we considered, he also he had made man in the land, and he was upset in his heart. He was upset in the heart, regretted. It is! When you're upset in the heart, you why would it be said upset? earlier that when you punish your children, it bothers you, but you don't regret. No, but you is comparing apples and oranges. God here, wait a bit, God here says initially, wait a bit, God initially said that he was pleased with his creation in Genesis 3. When, you, when your son... You see, you're doing something. it again. No, no, no. Before I finish, he's already interjecting. <laughs> In Genesis 3, in Genesis 3, yes, yes, but you haven't responded yet. That's the reason I'm, that's why I'm repeating. In Genesis 3, he was, he was pleased with his creation. In Genesis 6, 6, he regretted his creation. Okay, you're Is a father, it, you're Don't father. you see a contradiction in no, that? No, no. You you're don't see a contradiction. Okay. Son, has it ever happened? You've that already asked me this question. Has, that your son has done something really good that you're proud of. Yes. And at a later date, he's done something not good that you're not proud of. Yes. So you've gone from a state of being pleased with your son to being unhappy with your son. Yes. Is that a contradiction? No, it's not a contradiction. So Shall I tell you why? Shall I tell you why? Shall I tell you why? Because you see, when you're talking about a creation, yes? I, as a human being, do not know the future. Does God know the future? Yeah. Good. Did God know he was the the uh, sorry the creation that is going to create are going to be disobedient? Of course he did. Good. Wait, but wait. Right now. I haven't finished. <laughs> Let me finish, bro. Let me finish Let the point. Finish. When God knows the future already, so he knew that they were going to be disobedient. So when he made this statement that I'm pleased with my creation, when he made this statement, he already knew that he is going to be disobedient. The very creation that he created. They're going to be disobedient. So for you to tell me and compare me, a human, with God Almighty who knows the future, is comparing apples and oranges. Yeah. Keep shaking your head, but try to reconcile that. Because, because, wait, hold let him, on. Let him finish. Because God is in control of emotions. Whose God, emotions? God can have infinite thoughts at the same time. No, no, whose emotions is he in his control own. of? And his own, his own emotions? Yes. Okay, so his own he emotions. Can be, he can be pleased and, um, uh, and sad at the same time. Sad? Yes. God being sad. God being sad. God can have infinite thoughts are at the you, same time. Are you putting limits on God? You see, the thing Actually, is... Actually, you are. No, you are. No, you, you are. are. You are He's saying... Like you are sad. saying I'm you can only... Sad. Wait, wait, hold no. on a second. Wait, 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 you're not letting me finish. Let, let, let them finish. Okay, go on. You can only have one emotion at a time because you're a human being with human emotions. Why are you comparing a human with God? I don't understand. No, because you're trying to say... emotions at one time, but you can only have one at a time. You know, there's a difference between the emotions that humans have and the emotion that God has. So when you so for example, God loves. Listen, God loves. God has mercy and God has wrath. You cannot say that these these emotions of God are equivalent to that of human beings. Okay. So because that's, you are always comparing humans to God. Why? This is similar to what the Christians do. They somehow compare. When you talk about God, they talk about examples about human beings. No, you don't. You see, when God knows the future, there is no question of him regretting. He already knew they were going to be disobedient. You can use people as a parable. To, to, to I know. Give an example that your mind can understand. I know the parable. That we're Look, saying that God is like people. I know it, when you talk about parables. an example that you can yeah. understand. That's but, but when you talk about God, you should be aware that God knows the future. Look, if God knows the future, yes, then why would he need to regret? He already knew they were going to do this okay, disobedience. Yeah, God. Can we agree that God is above time and space? God is beyond, yeah, yes, it transcends time so and space. If God is above time and space, then God can see all time at once before him, and we then, cannot comprehend yeah. what that means. Then he right? shouldn't regret, now, you're right. Now, 
if God, if 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 God can can, can see every, all of time in front of him, just like that, okay. So God cannot see the future because because there is no future, okay? Because there is no future when it comes to God, oh my God. okay? Everything, okay, past, past, and future is all together at once when God looks at it, okay? Now, that, uh, that, now you can't say that God cannot have infinite emotions at once because obviously God can do anything. So God can have infinite emotions at once. And when you seek infinite time, you can have infinite emotions about the different aspects of the time that you're looking at. You know, your, your psychological argument here doesn't apply to the Bible because God does talk in sense of past. Wait, wait. Look, I didn't interrupt you when you were talking. I did not interrupt you when you were talking. And I think you give me the same courtesy. You are. You are. Because I don't know. Look, look. I, look I'm not comparing apples and oranges. Here. I'm saying God in the Bible speaks about the past and the present and the future. For example, God says in the Bible that there was no, there is no God before me and after me. Yes. Does He talk about the past and the future? Yes, He does. Now wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So your argument about being transcendent, yes, in His attribute, in His uh, existence, He is beyond space and time. I do not dispute that. But when he when he actually explains it in his scripture, actually in the uh, in the Jewish, Christian, and uh, Muslim uh, Islamic uh, scriptures, yes, there is definitely time uh, in which God expresses Himself, and this is linear. Yes, and this is what I'm telling you that when you talk about God, then you need to realize that God doesn't regret what He has done. It is something beyond uh, what do you say, God's nature. To regret something that he already is aware of us human beings we regret our mistakes mm. we make mistakes because we we somehow did not foresee what is going to be repercussions of those mistakes we did not see it coming the mistakes we commit are not deliberate they happen sometimes well most of the time same people do not make mistakes deliberately it happens because they don't know what's going to be the consequences so you might make wrong choice in your life I might make wrong choices in my life yes because I don't know what's in store for me tomorrow. Neither do you. But you see, this is something that we cannot apply to God Almighty. God knows exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, he just said so many times that it doesn't say in the original version. Well, he read it just himself. He read it. What, what was the word that he used instead of regret? Semantics, my friend. He did regret, whether you like it or not. Okay, so now now let's get back to it. Yeah, sure, sure. Go on. So, 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 let me, let me explain something. Um, God created man in his own image, right? Okay, so what quite does that mean? Because of course God is physical, okay? That means that all attributes that God has, he put into human beings. So that means if we have... Is that what you understand by it? Yes. Really? Yes. All the attributes of God are in human beings? Uh, well, uh, one of his attributes is immortality. Are you all immortal? Okay, fine. Are you all immortal? Any attribute that we have yeah. okay, must come from God, right? Okay, okay. Oh, yes, the yeah, equations of God. Yeah, so any attribute that we have yeah, but that doesn't come mean... from God. Okay. Now, if we have an attribute that we are able to reconsider something, or that, uh, 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 okay, our, that we are able to be pleased about something, it must come from the source. That's the source, the source is God. Okay? Now, let, let, now, in our fragile human minds, okay, we can't understand, okay, because God's not physical, okay, God having emotions such as regret, or such as, or, 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 or such as happiness, or whatever, okay, we don't understand that, okay, I mean, you, you see all these times that it says that God took us out of Egypt with an outstretched arm, God, uh, okay, and, and we say, well, God's not physical, how can you have, how can you have an arm, okay, these are all metaphors, okay, for, for, for a deep spiritual reality of God that we as humans cannot understand. But God in His Scripture, God in His Scriptures is is talking to us in ways that humans can understand. Okay, in physical terms. Okay, that are merely physical manifestations of the spiritual reality. I dispute that. The reason for that, the reason for that is because there are many things that we have as weaknesses, our characteristics and our attributes. I'll give you one. We can be both generous and miser, miserly. Yes? Do you think God is a miser? God wants to be a miser. Say it again, I didn't hear it. God can do whatever God wants to do. Can God be a miser? He can. He can. Are you sure? Yes. Are you
So God, 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 is, God is basically someone who is, who is limitless in his, um, uh, not, only, not, not only in what he can provide for you, yes, why would he need to be a miser? You see, a human nature. If we say that God look, look, I didn't interrupt you. I'm still making my point. Let me make, wait a minute, let me make my point and then you can interject. Okay, what I'm saying is that if God, you know, we say Allah is Ghani, yes, that means Allah is generous and he's basically limited in his, uh, uh, sorry, in his uh, the what about places where richness, in terms of what he has, he can provide you limitless if he wants to. Yes, we wouldn't say Allah is miser. Yes, this is what the Jewish people say, which you have confirmed no. that they that your God is miser no. and his hands are tight. No, we never said that. No, we he's, never said that. Well, I asked you, is he miser? You said yes. You asked, no, we is said he, he able can to. be. No, no, I said easy miser. You never said that. You said is he calm able down, to. Calm down, calm down. I don't know why you got all and agitated. We said, you okay, said, let me let me ask you once you again. Said, is is he God miser? No. Is he a miser? You asked, is he, is I, he I said, I said. Are you going to answer the question? Is God miserly? God can be if God wants to be. See, I did not ask you if he can be. I asked you, is no, he I, miserly? No, originally you asked us if he can. No, I asked, is he my, a miser? What is your answer? I don't know what God's being right now. So don't Do say all the attributes that we have. I like that of God. No. What about places where there's a famine? By the way, stop raining so you guys can unfold those umbrellas. Sorry, fold, fold it back. It's okay, I'm sure you can tolerate that. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm saying is that if you think that your nature and God's nature somehow is similar, I think that is that is not only a blasphemy, but it's actually an injustice to God Almighty. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Every again? single... I think, hold on, wait. Yeah, I, I would like to know, I really would like to know because for, for me... Can I, can, I, can I make an answer? I can answer that after you. Let him finish his point. Go on. Every attribute that you have yeah. can be used for good or for bad. Yeah. There are times when it's inappropriate to give things to someone. Miserliness is just a negative, a, a, a negative manifestation of an attribute which could potentially be used for good. So miserly can be used for good? Let's yes. say you have a child. Give an example. Let's say you have a child that begs you for something that you know he's not supposed that's to That's not called miserly. I don't think you understand the meaning of miserly. It's, you're no, but I'm saying that's a positive. Look it up in the dictionary. No, my friend. Miserly you know, doesn't mean you, you know, stop. Hold on, wait, miserly wait, wait, doesn't wait. mean you use your money wisely. Wait, wait, wait. Miserly is the opposite of that. No, no, when you're no. able to, when you're able to spend it on someone for good, you, you stop yourself. You that like, is being miserly. On, you don't like me interrupting you. The point is, every attribute has a positive. Miserliness is just the negative manifestation of a of an attribute which could be used for good or bad. Miserliness is when you're using that attribute for negative. No. There are times when you're supposed to withhold things from people and times when that's you're not. not. not Miserliness is a situation where you're you using that attribute on you? for the negative. Can someone look up the word miser? Because I believe this gentleman here doesn't want to, sorry, doesn't understand the meaning of the miser in the context the in which I'm I using no, 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 it. No, no, you're not so, understanding so, the point so, I'm so, making. I know the point you're making. You're saying every attribute has good and bad. I disagree with that. There are many attributes that are purely just evil. There, okay. are actually, there are words which describe an attribute being used for the wrong. No, there are, there are attributes which are purely evil. For example, if someone has this nature to rape, for example, yes? You can never use that in a positive way. Your attribute to rape. Or your ability to rape it can a, never be used for a positive thing. But that is rape, a rape is inherently evil and bad. But Do you agree? Rape, yes, listen. Do you agree? Rape is a bad manifestation. Yes? You can never use it for positive. Can I ask that? Rape is a bad manifestation of, of, of the desire that everybody has for physical relationships. No, no, what is the manifestation of? Which attribute? The attributes of physical relationships, which can be used for the good. If people didn't have that desire, wait, wait, wait. there'd be no future generations. Physical relationship. Yes. Yes. And, and, and rape. Rape, rape is, is not, a misuse wait, of that attribute. Rape is not nothing to do with physical relationship. Really? It is to do it is to do with empowering. So you basically overpowering someone who's weak. Sometimes even overpowering. Not, there's no physical relationship do you, there. Do you think do you think Look, you look, think, all I'm saying is in order for you to be a miser, to be considered as a miser, is where you could have afforded to give someone money, for example, or some food, and you withdraw from that ability. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even look at the uh, the definition. Maybe you want to read it? So the definition... Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
so, 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 in the context I'm using. So, so the definition of a word in English, okay, is going to be how you come to an argument to question God. No, no, we are using so, English as communication. Are you using English definition. Come on, guys, you're not going to use that as an argument, are you? And therefore, what you're doing is so I'm using English as a language. What you're doing is you're using semantics to question. No, I'm not. To question. I'm not. I asked you very clearly: Is God a miser? And you guys, well, yes. If he wants, he can be. Are you saying he can't? A person, wait a minute. Are you saying he can't? Miser, wait a minute. Are you saying if God wants to be miser, he can't be? So if God wants to die, can he die? <laughs> you see, this is a very wrong way to use an argument because what you guys are doing exactly is what the Christians would do. I wouldn't expect this from a Jewish person, especially one who is knowledgeable and studied his scriptures. For you to use such language as to what God can do, you know what we Muslims say about this kind of questions? We say God does what befits his majesty. So if you're going to say, can God die if he wants to? Or if he cannot die, he's, limit, he's limited. No, that is a non-question. It goes against the nature of God for him to die. If I ask you, can God become ignorant of anything if he's already all knowledgeable? No, he cannot. Because this is, goes against the nature of God. And that is what we Muslims would say. We would say it's against his nature of the, uh, of the uh, attribute of his omniscience. So anything that goes against God's attributes or his nature, yes, it is something that God does not do or doesn't manifest. This is something which is expected of someone who knows God and expected a lot from you guys. But for you to say, oh, God cannot be a miser if he wants to, come on guys. If, it's, if, it, is go if it is not in his nature to be a miser, then God is not a miser. Simple as that. And here it is. Look. A person who lives in rash circumstances in order to save and hold money. That is a definition of miser from the dictionary. But that's, a, de that, that's a definition of somebody who is using an attribute for the No, when you, when, you don't, when you have a treasure, yes, and when you're able to help people, but you do not help people because of your, of your what do you say, uh, your miserliness, then you are a miser, my friend. But supposing you use that same attribute to withhold something when you're supposed to withhold No, that's different. I wouldn't term that as miser. Because we, his original point, can I, can I make my point? Yeah, sure. His original point was that every attribute comes ultimately from God. God has the capability of withholding things okay. from you. For you to say every people, attribute comes from God. Look. Now, what you're saying is with, with the definition of the word of miser is somebody who's taking this capability of withholding things and using it for the bad. He's using it because he wants still, to You still misunderstood the meaning of miser. That's why I said I suggest you look at the dictionary. If you don't, if you do not understand the meaning from this dictionary which he gave you, use your own dictionary and find out the meaning of miser. What you're talking about, what you're, no, no, what you're talking about is being basically economical in your way of perhaps giving the money to a child, for example. Maybe the child will misuse that money that you give him and he's going to basically be hurting himself. That I wouldn't consider as being miser. That is you being wise with your money that to a child, you're not being miser. That is a positive way of using the oh same attribute as misers use in a negative no, no. sense. You got, go, really have to go and look up the word miser. You know here what I'm saying? Miser is somebody who misuses that particular characteristic. Which characteristic? The characteristic of being able to withhold. Withhold what? Anything that means anything. You haven't you understood the meaning of miser. Alright, take care guys. Thanks for your time. Jazakallah khairan. So basically they were trying to say that the attributes that yeah, the attributes that we humans have, yes, is given by God. Yes, I agree it's been given by God. But it's got nothing to do with the attributes of God. You see, our attributes and God's attributes are not the same. Yes, there's always going to be a difference in the creation and the creator in terms of our attributes, in terms of our nature. Yes, we have the nature of being mortals. We're going to die one day. Does God die? No, absolutely not. So even though this nature of ours, of mortality, has been given to us by our Creator, it does not represent Him, i.e. He is not a mortal. The one who created us is immortal, which is God Almighty. So for you to say that when, we, when God created us in His image, it doesn't literally mean that we look or behave or have the characteristics of God Almighty. Yes? Like I said uh, previously with regards to this question about the image of God is like, for example, that the form that we are made is the form or the blueprint of God Almighty. That He created us with this blueprint, which is His. And our likeness is from that, from that blueprint, from that plan of His. The other, the other understanding which I think the scholars also gave 
is in terms of Allah is hearing, Allah sees, yes, we hear, we see, however, how Allah sees and how He hears is degrees different to how we hear and how we see. So this is something He has those attributes, we have those attributes, yes, but obviously there's a big difference in how we can utilize these attributes and how what the limitations of these attributes are in comparison to that of God. And this is very simple. So for the Jews to say that Allah is a miser, and I believe there's, I followed the ayah in which it is, that Allah's hands are tied. This is in the Quran. This is something which the understanding which we see in the, uh, among the Jewish even today. Yes, maybe these two gentlemen didn't understand the meaning of the word miser. But miser doesn't mean that you use your money with wisdom. Yes, and you do not misuse it. Miser is basically you are greedy. You want to hold that money that you have and that treasure you have or whatever God has given you. You don't want to use it on people who are poorer than you, or people who are who are in need. Yes, and this is where one of the pillars of Islam is zakah, where we do not acquire this um, this uh, nature of being a miser. Yes, we are told to be generous. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to be generous with our money yes particularly those people who can afford it every Muslim who can afford it they have to pay zakat which is a form of charity every year two and two and a half percent of your saving is to be donated to the people who are needy and this is from the pillars of Islam one of the major pillars of, from the five pillars of Islam is to give zakat and we see this clearly mentioned so many times in the Quran. Whenever Allah mentions the Salah, the second pillar of Islam, He has also, also mentioned the importance and the obligation of giving charity in Zakat. Alhamdulillah, today in Britain, the Muslims amongst all the other people are considered to be the most generous because we give the most charity. Yes, even from amongst all the people, from the religious, whether they're religious or non-religious. Yes. So if you if you look at uh, when um, the last prime minister was the prime minister here, he gave an important speech in which he he really appreciated the Muslims giving charity, and he praised the Muslim community for this for giving charity. So Alhamdulillah, this nature has been instilled in the Muslims. You okay. All right. Do you mind? No, 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 don't touch me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't touch me, please. He instilled don't this nature me. in the Muslims, alhamdulillah, to give charity in Islam. Jazakallah khairan and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muslims in Norway are now establishing a masjid and dawah center to enhance the Norwegian dawah. If you donate to this cause, you will inshallah reap the rewards of thousands of Muslims coming back to Islam and many of those who become du'at and invite to Islam. So click the link and donate now and share the video for extra rewards.